Hey, welcome, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is that this particular stunning look has been achieved with this revolution reloaded chilled palette with cannabis sativa so if you want to find out my thoughts on this palette good or bad and then my darling you're in exactly the right place grab a drink Grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I have not put my lights on yet. There we go. I'm actually filming in daylight. Yay! Um, welcome back from the intro. Um, I will have shown you in the intro that I'm going to be using this one. I will admit, when I saw the outside of the packaging, I got very excited. And then I opened it up. Not exactly what's on the outside of the tin, but it is a colour story that appealed to me, so I picked it up. It does have three pressed glitters. Silver, a teal, and a sort of like a deep mossy green. Um, and at first look, this one and this one look ridiculously similar colours. Looking at them up close, this one is slightly deeper and has a more yellow undertone to it. But it's not. Once you get that on your eyes, you're not really going to see the difference. So that to me was a wasted choice. They could have put. Um, they could have put a different shade in there because either of those two on the eye are going to look exactly the same once you get them blended out. Um, there are one, two, three, three matte greens and three matte browns. The rest of it is shimmers and glitters. So if you're the kind of person who needs a lot of mattes to create a look, you may find this a little bit restrictive. Right. Um, this is a teaching channel. That, combined with my chronic pain, means that I don't blend as quickly as a lot of channels do. So. If I am going too slowly for you, up there is a speed widget, please feel free to use it. Right, I'm going to go in briefly and talk through the difference between hooded and deep set eyes. Regular viewers, you'll have heard this a million times, so just fast forward until you see me wave a brush at you with some colour on it. Unless you want to sit through and listen to my wonderful dulcet tones explain the difference to you such an elegant manner or well, something like that right faces washed moisturized SPF and primed um, it's actually cold today so I've got the heating on at home so I went in with this soothe and cool primer stick from MUA Pro Base and then went over the top of that with my usual antiperspirant primer. 
More details on the antiperspirant primer are in a film that is listed in the description box along with all of my discount codes. Let's get you zoomed in. As ever, the eye primer that I am using is a Crow and Pebble. And I'm using the <coughs> oh, excuse me, pure white one called Blank Page Cotton. You can see I've made a heck of a dip in that because that was completely level. And this is my second pot of it. Um, it's by far the best eye primer I've used. I would recommend it to anybody <coughs> and everybody. I apply it just very lightly with a fluffy brush. I basically twirl into it and then just buff out across the lid. Um, it goes on dry so you can blend on it immediately without having to set it so you don't lose any of the colour impact and even on my deep set eyes it doesn't crease and as I put too thick a layer on let me have a quick slurp of my drink non-alcoholic today folks <clears throat> still can't believe I did a film where I was drinking an alcoholic drink anyway I do have a discount code for the eyelid primer and it's not affiliated, so I don't earn from it. Um, she does it in six shades at the moment. White is the lightest, chocolate brown and black are the deepest, and then there's three skin tone shades in between. <clears throat> right, eye shape. Now, you've heard me mention already, I've got deep set eyes. Now, a lot of people with deep set eyes are mistakenly told or mistakenly believe they have hooded lids because we have the same issues. We get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If we're cutting the crease, we can't just cut the socket, we have to cut onto the upper lid. And with glitters, even with a glitter glue, we get a bare patch right through there. <clears throat> now, I'm going to teach you a workaround for each eye shape so you can follow any tutorial that you see. But first off, you have to know which type of eye you have because the workarounds are quite different. Now, when I relax my brows, <clears throat> oh, I'm so sorry, I think I've got, I think it's the change of weather, <clears throat> my dulcet tones and everything, I'm barking at you like a bloody bullfrog. Right, when I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see much of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to your lash line, part or all of that mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demo on this side because this is the eye that I'm blind in, so I can make sure I'm still on screen and in focus. If I cover, this eye's a little bit swollen today with my fibro. If I cover the visible mobile lid and close that eye, you can see I've got as much lid again, if not more, but folds back away. You can't see. And then if I cover the static lid and do the same thing, you can see again I've got lid there that tucks back away. And it's those two bits of lids rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. <clears throat> so, the workarounds. Get a brush like this, or a pencil brush, and if you have a hooded lid, sketch out on your static lid where you need your crease to be. So you're creating a mobile lid on your static lid. Obviously this is going to reduce the space between the new crease and the brow, so use smaller blending brushes and if you're really restricted on real estate here, take the colour right up to the brow. Usually, unless I'm doing an editorial look, I will leave a gap here. Um, but if you are really restricted on space, then just take the colour up to your brows. <clears throat> or do like a friend of mine does, shave them off and draw them on a bit higher up her face. I only do that if you're feeling very brave. She practised drawing brows above her brows for weeks before she actually did that. Right, <clears throat> if you've got deep set eyes like myself, all we have to do when we're putting a deeper colour through the crease is stop relax our brows, look forward, and just make sure we brought it up high enough that it can be seen when our eyes are open. 
So, there you go, two very different workarounds. <clears throat> I am going to go in with one of my uh, Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro brushes to start with. Um, these are, there's a film linked in the description box where I list my recommended brushes. And although these are a professional brush, they're two quid a brush, so they're not expensive. This is the crease brush, which is round and fluffy. And I'm going to start off by going into Relax, which is um, beige, basically. Or Ecru, if you're talking jumpers. Right, those of you who are fast forwarding, this is your signal to stop. <laughs> right. Now, I hold the brush right at the end, so I put as little pressure on as possible. And I start off with little circular movements. And you can see, going towards the nose, I go in this direction. And I have a little bit of a bounce here. And reverse the direction to come back out again. I much prefer putting a little bit of pigment on the brush and building up slowly to putting a huge amount of pigment on and then suddenly having issues of being able to blend it out. Um, it's one of the things that I like about a lot of Revolution palettes. You can build the colour up, but they do tend to start off much, much softer. So for beginners, they are much more forgiving. Um, and if you're just transitioning from using neutrals and you're getting into colour again, um, they're a lot more forgiving. Now this obviously is a light shade anyway, but I'm going to build it up as much as I can. I do struggle here and here with dry patches, so I can sometimes struggle to get pigment to build up just there. If it helps, if you like watching Strictly Come Dancing or um, Dancing with the Stars if you're an American, Think of this as the Theonese Waltz of applying. You have your natural turns, you have a fleckle, and then you have your reverse turns. I love me a bit strictly. I've had a thing about Anton ever since the series started, years and years and years ago. He's finally been given someone this year who can actually dance. Normally he gets the uh, the oldest, least mobile of the competitors. You can always tell if he doesn't think they can do the dance very well because he'll come out in the most ridiculous outfits um, and try and add funny elements to the dances. Um, but he is very, very good at showcasing what his partner can do rather than what they can't. Um, I'm just I keep stopping and checking with my brows relaxed because my you know your eyes are not symmetrical unless you're James Charles and you photoshop it over. I hate that. I really hate that because it's I don't use any kind of filters unless it's an obvious Snapchat filter. But then if I put up an obvious Snapchat filter there will also be photos that are not filtered. Um, the most I do with a photo is if the light's not good, I'll brighten it up a bit just so you can see the colours. But I don't do any face tuning, I don't do any blending or blurring or anything like that. Because I want you to know that the looks that, that I produce are achievable and that you can, with practice, get exactly the same look. But because your eyes are not the same colour, some, not the same shape rather, sometimes you have to do slightly different shapes to make them look the same. Okay, I've got a clean washcloth that I'm going to clean this brush off with. I used to use a colour switch, um, but I found that quite harsh on the bristles. Uh, I much prefer, I've got a succession of different washcloths and microfiber cloths. They do end up stained no matter how well you wash them out but they're much gentler on the bristles especially natural bristles these are synthetic uh, if you're wondering 
Okay, I'm going to go into Leaf, which is one of the green mattes, the lightest green matte. See, this is what's annoying me. There's only three green mattes, and the two of them are so similar. Why didn't you give me a, a, either a, a light green, this sort of shade? Because this, to me, is a mid-green. You know, if you're talking... This is the colour I've just put on. This is a mid-brown. This, to me, is a mid-green, not a light green. So why didn't you give us a nice light green? Or why didn't you give us a super dark green? Um, it is annoying. I mean, there are shimmers that you can use. And I'm not averse to using a shimmer as a matte, as people will know. But I know a lot of people don't like doing that. So I'm just going to blend this a little bit further down. And buff it into that brown. See, this is, this is quite a citrusy green. It almost looks blue against that brown. It's blending quite nicely. I mean, greens, purples and blues are the most difficult colours to create. Browns are the easiest. So you will always find, if there's a... Well, this one's obviously got a lot of greens in it anyway, so I'm going to be using green. But if there is a, a multi-tone palette, I will, for first impressions, normally pick up either a purple or a blue or a green as my choice simply to see how well those colours work because if you just go into the neutrals you don't really get an idea of, of how well the palette is cultivated because as I said neutrals are some of the easiest colours to create and to get to blend out well. Now with this eye, this is the eye that I'm blind in, it got pulled around an awful lot when I was a kid at the ophthalmic hospital. And by kid, I mean five years old, so we're talking 40 years ago. But it has left me with these super deep creases just here. Um, now, sometimes doing this circular movement will be sufficient, because the reason I do this is because it very gently moves the skin of your lid around. So if, like me, you don't have very tight eyelids anymore, and you don't need to be old to have that, I mean... Ugh, you know, I'm 45 and I've lost 14 stone, but I know 20 year olds who've got loose eyelids, just genetically. Um, so by doing this, holding the brush at the bottom, putting as little pressure on as possible, you're gently moving the skin around so that you don't get like a barcoding or a tiger striping effect. probably be easier to show you on a deeper colour. Now sometimes, depending on the formula, I can work it just like this. Other times, because that creasing is so deep, I do have to stretch my lid out slightly, which I don't like doing, but unfortunately needs must. Just cleaning this brush off. I'm just going to buff where the green meets the brown. I think I need a little bit more green this side, just here, to match me up. Yeah. This is what I was saying about always sit back and double check how it's looking. And just make sure it looks the same, both sides. I'm really not worried about fallout because I do my base afterwards. I used to do my base first um, and just put a load of powder here to catch the fallout but that's the equivalent of baking and when you're the side of 40 that I am baking is not kind to your skin. Right, I'm going to change brushes still staying with the Chic Pro Modern Langlickle but I'm going into an eyeshadow brush and this one is more oval rather than round because I want to contain through the crease more. So I'm going to go into natural, which is the, the deeper of those two mid greens, but again, once it's on your eye, you're really not going to see a difference. And I'm going to start off 
by windscreen wipering that through my crease. So I mean that's really not that deep. And then I'm going to blend that out. I'm not going to take it too high, just high enough that it can be seen. And just buffing the edges out a little bit, just to soften that. As I said, fallout doesn't worry me. If it bugs you, big fluffy brush, dust it away. Um, but to be honest, it really, really doesn't worry me at all. So this green's actually buffing quite nicely, which is a good sign. Put a little bit of that just on the outer corner of my mobile lid. Just a deep now. I really wish that there was a much, much deeper green than this. It's really bugging me that there isn't a deep, 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 deep green in this palette. I start off with mini windscreen wipers because of my lid moving so much before I go into the big windscreen wiper. And then it's a bit easier to show you with this eye because obviously being blind in this one I can actually close it but if I closed the other eye there wouldn't be a lot of makeup happening. Well, look, well I, I could kind of blend going on muscle memory and stuff but there's no guarantee I'd still be on screen or in focus or anything. You can see this side I get an awful lot more in terms of fallout because this eyelid moves more. You can see what I mean about that barcoding now, and I just have to really gently go in. I mean, whenever I'm putting a shimmer on the lid, I have to stretch the lid out because otherwise, the shimmer pigments pack into um, the deep crease, and then throughout the day, they just end up cascading down my face and looking an absolute mess. which is rather annoying. I will normally dust the majority of the fallout away at this point. But I will be tidying up with a micellar wipe or micellar water in a little bit anyway. I think. I grabbed um, quite a few of the, the, um, the Jeffrey brush sets from Morphe um, and I also got some that were not in the set but were still available. This is his JS24 which is a lip brush but it's great if you've got deep set eyes like myself for getting right into that corner and I'm going to be using my Wet n Wild Primer Water Spray to wet the brush after I've applied pigment to it. Do you know what? I'm going to tidy those edges up. Yeah, it's really frustrating me that this has not got a deeper green in it. I mean, I could go in with the brown to deepen it up, but I wanted to do an all green look today. Right, I'm going to start off by going into Candyland, which is the lightest of the 
green shimmers. As with all Revolution ones, they do tend to go hard pan the minute you touch them. But, um, bizarrely, you can still actually get colour up on them. Right, I always twist this against my fingers like this to dry the ferrule off. Because you don't want moisture coming down here and loosening the glue on your bristles. Otherwise, you'll have an extinct brush. Right, I've got a little mirror here that I'm going to look down into just so that you can see what I'm doing still. I'm just going to go right into the corner with that. You can see now why I like this brush. It really is great for getting into that corner. That's quite a nice shimmer. Right, dry the brush and clean the brush before going back in and picking up more pigment. You should never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. I see so many people doing it, I'm just like, there's someone who doesn't normally pay for their makeup. It drives me mad when the bigger beauty gurus do that. Because, yes, you can scratch the top layer off again or use the sellotape trick, but if you keep doing it, it will eventually sink down through the layers and affect the whole colour and then you will not be able to use that shade no matter what you do I just think it's alright for these ones that, that get PR and don't really have to worry about whether they screw up a palette but for those of us like me who are disabled on a very restricted income you, you don't want to bugger your palettes up basically right I think I'm going to go into <clears throat> mist Wow, this one's really hard panning the minute I put the brush in it. Okay. If you can see that, see, that's just hard panned instantly. But I have picked up pigment both sides of the brush, so. Dry the ferrule off, and then I'm going to pop this on the middle part or middle third of the lid. I'm not going to do glitters today because, as I said, my eyes are a little swollen anyway from fibro today, so I really don't want to irritate them because I do have to get films done today, tomorrow and Sunday. And I'm just going to lightly drag from the lighter shade across into the deeper one just to blend where the two colours make and to soften that area. Alright, if I go back into that same bit, can I pick pigment up again? Surprisingly, yes. Oh, just managed to gouge a huge great chunk out of it. But despite I went over the bit that was hard panned and you can still get pigment up, so Revolution must just be putting an awful lot of um, oils and stuff in there latest satins and shimmers but right, you see how dark this is this is the shade that I wanted as a matte and I probably will at some stage 
Um, let me know if you want to see another look done with this, where I do use some of the glitters. Um, just let me know in the, in the comments box below. And uh, I mean, obviously, I'm still going to be using this off camera, but if you want to actually see another tutorial using this, let me know and um, I will go back in and do that for you. That's not a problem at all. Right, I am now going to pause you while I go and bung some foundation and whatnot on. I will be back. For you, darlings, it will be instant. For me, it's going to be a few minutes. So I'll see you the next time that I press the record button. Dee Dee, now's the time for you to guess what kind of brows I'm going to come back with. Hello, I am back. But, brown brows, who knew? Fluffy hairs are coming out. Marvellous. Right, I'm going to go in with this flat brush. And I'm going to go into... Actually, I'm going to go into Mist, which is that deeper shimmer that I used. And I'm going to run that along under the bottom lash line. Now you see how lovely that is, how lovely and deep that is. Why couldn't they have given us a matte that colour? Honestly, this this is oh. It's like they're not thinking through anymore. They've given us a deep brown matte, so why haven't you given us a nice deep green? It's crazy to have a shimmer darker than the darkest matte because normally you would want the darkest shade to the outer edge and through the crease to add definition and add shape to the eye I don't know I think Revolution are losing the plot a little bit to be quite honest Right, this is the Tarte Graveyard Girl brush. I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky. Um, you can go in with a smudger brush like this if you prefer or um, a little dense stubby little blender but I like this one. And I'm going to go into I think Huff which again is a shimmer Looks like a, a grungy, olivey green shimmer. And I'm going to buff that along the eyelash line. Now, obviously, when you're blending shimmers, be careful because you can get a fallout from them. So, the denser the brush you are using, the better because then you are less likely. To have them, you know, splay powder where you don't want powder going, basically. Because my eyes are swollen, I'm not even going to consider eyeliner today. Because I know what the result will be. This is a cheap lip brush that I got from eBay probably ooh, 10 years ago now. Oh, hello, sorry, there you are. And I am going to go in with... Now, shall I use that one or shall I use this one? I might go with my Becca, one of my light chasers. This is Rose Quartz Flashes Seashell. I know pink may not be the colour you anticipate me going for with a green, but I actually like how this one pulls, so I'm just going to tuck that just under the tail of my brow there.
and then in a corner and regular viewers will know that with my eye shape I like to bring it under the tear duct and just softly blend it in with the colour that I'd run underneath the eye you don't have to do that, you can just leave it as in a corner like that but like I said I like to finish it off nicely okay right I will pause you for one last time I will apply more highlight to various places of my face I will go in with some mascara I will choose a lipstick do something with my hair which has gone ridiculously fluffy and I'll be right back for you instant my darling voila I um, I finally caved and bought myself some of that function of beauty shampoo and conditioner so I used it for the first time yesterday and I don't condition my hair every time I wash it because I've got oily hair and I find that if I do that it just gets too heavy but obviously for the first wash with it I did use conditioner um, and given that I did use the conditioner on it it is ridiculously light and fluffy today so uh, maybe that's a good sign but then my hair always looks good the first time I try a new shampoo. Well, I've always got a million shampoos because normally my hair gets used to a shampoo and it doesn't clean as well. Why am I wishing about shampoo when I'm supposed to be doing makeup? Because it's beauty and lifestyle, that's why. Right. Um, obviously, I used the same highlight everywhere. I went in with the Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara to match the palette. Lipstick is Jeffrey's Karma. Um, I used the Rich Lux X Gerard Slay All Day in Dreamsicle. When I bought the set, because I have actually got, don't quite know what that was that fell down, but okay, I have got the. Uh, the whole set. I honestly thought Dreamsicle would be my favourite, but it's not. The mint chocolate is my favourite. Oh boy, is that my favourite. I really do wonder what just fell. Can't see anything disappeared. Oh, something went. Anyway, um, I do have discount for Gerard because obviously. Jen was one of the first people to actually open up her, she's one of the first people for a, a larger international brand to open up her affiliate program to anybody regardless of size. So there are thousands of Gerard Cosmetics codes floating around, mine is listed in the description box below. As I mentioned it is an affiliate program, I do earn a little bit from it if you use it. Don't have to use my code, like I said millions out there but props to Jen for being one of the first huge companies to actually open up her affiliate program to micro influencers like myself um, that was that was really really props to her which I'm loving you know Marlena's giving it all the talk from makeup geek but you know where's where's her pushing stuff out to smaller because what she also did when you first joined the affiliate program, she gave you an amount of credit to spend in the store as well. I am looking ridiculously pale today. I definitely need to stop wearing this foundation. If you're wondering, by the way, the foundation is the uh, NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop in Light Ivory, which normally is the right colour for me. Um, okay. But, we're talking about this. First impressions. Um, you heard my thoughts earlier about the colour range. 
I don't understand why there are two mid-tone green mats when you could have put a really nice deep mat in there, a nice deep green mat. Um, and again, there's only there's three green mats, three brown mats, but three brown mats. You've got a light, a medium, and a deep. So that makes perfect sense. But then if you go into the green mats, you've got a mid, a medium, and a slightly darker medium. Can you see what I mean about the depth of colour change? in these compared to these. I just think I don't know whether they've had a change of um, directors in their kind of inspiration or design element side but just recently I've not been as drawn to Revolution palettes as I used to. I used to want every single one that came out. It's one of the reasons I put myself on a low buy this year because I was I was almost buying a, a palette or two palettes every week. Um, and obviously I've, I've restrained a lot from that this year. There's a lot of Revolution palettes that I didn't pick up. Um, I just think They don't seem to be giving as much thought to the colour schemes that they used to. You know, why why do such a colourful tin if you're not going to have those colours reflected inside? If you wanted to do a bright cannabis one, then do a bright cannabis one. But if you're going to do uh, a cannabis inspired palette that is just greens and browns, then make the packaging reflect that. That that kind of jarred on me straight away. Then, you know, the, the lack of, of thought in terms of those maps, that frustrated me. The shadows I used blended out absolutely fine. Built up absolutely fine. Um, great for beginners as well because they don't go on too heavy to start with you can control the depth of shade with them not a massive amount of fallout um, the shimmers that I use did go to hard pan but even though they went to hard pan you could still pick up colour on the brush when you went over the same area again next time round um, To be honest, I'm not really sure how I feel about this at the moment. Um, I've got a lot of green palettes. I bought an awful lot of green palettes this year. Because green seems to have been the colour of the year. Last year it was purple, this year it seems to be green. Uh, which I'm not going to complain about because I love putting green on my green eyes. It really makes them pop. Um, but when you compare that to um, I mean let's 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 go again drugstore but let's do American drugstore. This is one of their monochromatic. This is the green one, just my luck. You look at that and you can see we've got super light greens, we've got mid greens, we've then got deeper greens in the matte format so we've got options we have choice with this um, you know I bought the Layla 2 palette from Blush Tribe which is an array of greens um, I bought the Smoke Show palette uh, 
actually this one over here that I've not filmed with yet. This is the Elf, Elf Earth and Ocean palette. So obviously ignore the more blue element of the palette. But even here we've got depth of shade when it comes to the mats. Um, I think this has good intentions and what I've used so far I like. There are a lot of things that I would change about this palette. So, um, I will leave it up to you. If you like the colour story and you're the kind of person who prefers using browns through your crease and just putting a pop of colour on the lid, then this could be the ideal palette for you. Uh, someone like me who loves playing with colour it's a little bit disappointing which is a shame because the majority of revolution palettes that I've had I've really loved this one is falling a little flat for me which is frustrating but it does prove that you do always get honesty from me on this channel Talking of this channel, if you are one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people at a rate of knots. Uh, it's, it's very frustrating when you set yourself a target, you think, right, I want to hit this number by the end of the month. And you hit it and you're like, yay! And then two days later you're two or three below that again and you're like, oh, okay. It's one of the reasons I still haven't done my subscriber giveaway yet, because... I keep thinking, oh, I'll do it when I get to 500, and then I hit 500, and it was like up and down and up and down. Like, oh, okay. And then by the time it had stabilised, I was on like 530 or something. So I thought, oh, I can't really do it now. I'll wait for the 600, and the same thing was happening there. Um, I might just do an end of the year subscriber giveaway, regardless of what my numbers are. Because uh, obviously, I've been collecting bits and pieces through the year to, to give away to you. So, and the risk is the longer I leave it, you may already have those palettes and whatnot. So, just please check you're still subscribed. Not just with me, but with all of your favourite channels that you follow. If, however, you are new to this channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, normally, I'm a much more positive person. Um, but this does at least show you, you do get honesty from me, <clears throat> even if I like the brand. So, if you'd like to join the 4F family, it's very easy, there's a subscribe button glowing bright red. Click that, turn it grey and then jump through however many hoops YouTube want you to jump through in order to get notifications because one of the days you could just like a channel and they'd send you notifications of when they upload it. Those were the days. Right, let me know if you want to see me do another tutorial with this using the glitters or if you're, you're done with the palette and you're like, no, 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 you just continue to use it and just give us an update at some point about how the glitters were formed. I will, I will follow your requests to a certain extent. <laughs> right, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, darlings, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.